Hello guys, welcome to study algorithms and today we would be looking at finding the maximum sum contiguous subarray. First, we would understand the problem statement and define a contiguous subarray. Then, we would try to solve it in a naive way and see what problems could occur. Next, we would optimize the solution and discuss Cadence algorithm followed by a dry run of the code. So, let us dive into the problem. To get started with this problem, we first need to understand what a subarray is. A subarray is any array that can be formed by using the elements of the array itself. So, given this array, you can form various subarrays. One of the subarrays could be formed using minus 5 and 6. One of the subarrays could be formed using minus 3, 5, and minus 6. But this problem talks about a contiguous subarray. With a contiguous subarray, its special property is that all the elements are next to each other. So, minus 5, comma 6 would be considered as a contiguous subarray, whereas minus 3, comma 5, comma minus 6 is not a contiguous subarray. As per the problem statement, you need to find out the maximum sum possible that can be formed using all the possible contiguous subarrays. Let us have a look at some of the possible contiguous subarrays that you can form with this example. You can have arrays like. Note that all of these are contiguous subarrays, and each of these contiguous subarrays has some sum. So the sum of the first subarray is minus 7, the sum of the second subarray is minus 1, and the sum of the third subarray is 3. So you need to find out a subarray that exists in this example that is contiguous and has a maximum sum. I've already worked out this example for you and in this case the maximum subarray possible is this and it has a sum of 7. So upon running your program your code should output the answer 7. Let us see how you can go about solving it. As a good practice we would first try to solve the problem and then we would try to optimize it. So a naive approach to solve this problem would be just find out all the possible contiguous subarrays, find out their sum, and see which contiguous subarray has the maximum sum. Let us try to see what could happen if we try to go with this approach. So let us take up each of these contiguous subarrays one by one. We start off with our array minus six, and then we form all the contiguous subarrays possible starting with the first element. Now we evaluate the sum. Up till now, the maximum sum possible is 0. Let us try to start our array from 1. Now evaluating the sums. So we got a new sum maximum sum array and that looks like 1,5. But wait, we need to keep looking forward. Starting off with 5 and then evaluating its sums. And last but not the least, we have the element minus 2 and its sum would be 2. So out of all of these possible subarrays, we can see that the maximum sum is formed by this subarray. So our answer should be 6. But can you see the problem we would be having by this method? In just an array of size 4, you already have 4, 7, 9 and 10. You have 10 different subarrays possible. Think about a case when you have array of cell size 100 or you have an array of size 1000. Then the number of contiguous subarrays would just explode and you would realize that this solution is not efficient. In fact, the complexity of this solution is order of n square. Can we optimize this? Let us try to think about it. To optimize this problem, we need to think a little differently. Instead of going forward, what if we go backwards and try to come up with a solution? So I would just try to look at element number 3 and then try to form all the possible contiguous subarrays in the backward direction. So let me just try to create all of these arrays. And now evaluating their sums. If you see the maximum possible contiguous sum of subarrays is 4 over here. But this problem does not end over here. Let me just try to form all the possible subarrays that are ending at element number 4. So all the subarrays would 
looks something like and their sums would be so for all the sub arrays that end at element number four the maximum contiguous sum is one but do you really think we need to calculate the sum of all of these sub arrays if you look closely we have already evaluated the sums of all of these sub arrays and they can be found over here so why not just use these to evaluate the maximum sum possible for the contiguous sum sub arrays that are ending at element number four so let me just try to use these sums and then evaluate my maximum possible contiguous sum i am just using element four for now and i would be using my already evaluated sums to find the new result now calculating their sums and hence you see the maximum possible contiguous sum ending at element number four again comes out to be one so what does this tell you if you start from the beginning and go all the way up to the end and apply this technique at every element and if you keep a track of all the maximum possible sums that you find out then at the very end you would know what is the maximum possible contiguous sum let us just try to take this example one step further i would be populating element number five and using the result i already obtained now calculating the sums in this case the maximum possible contiguous sum is two the approach we are using over here is called memoization it means that we are already using our derived result to evaluate our further problem this is a very common example of dynamic programming and as some of you may have guessed this is also called as the cadence algorithm let us try to do a dry run and see how this exactly works in our code to start off we initialize two variables the value max so far would be storing the maximum possible sum of the contiguous sub arrays and the value current max would store the sum of the contiguous sub array at a particular position next we run a loop from i equals to 1 up till the length of the array to update the values of current max and max so far so for the first iteration i equals to 1 the values would be updated something like for i equals to 2 for i equals to 3 going forward with i equals to 4 going next with i equals to 5 going forward with i equals to 6 and lastly going forward with i equals to 7 so after all these iterations are complete we can see that we have our val maximum value as 7 and this is our answer please note that this algorithm runs in order of n time and occupies order of one extra space we saw how we can use memoization to reuse the result we have already processed and find a solution in order of n time this is a classic example of a suboptimal structure you can find the link to the problem in the description below and please feel free to comment below in case of any doubts thank you